basis of political favours, political lobbying. Um, the consequences in this case were disastrous. They didn't believe in economists. It was clear the uh, yeah, government and their thought. But economic advice is something we don't trust. You know, we need to talk to our business partners. They decide, along with our other, you know, political interests, what's the best economic policy. The government did, at best, too little to control spending during the boom, which is the standard economic prescription. It cites the establishment of the National Pension Reserve Fund in 2001. But as the reports point out, it was in 2006 and 2007 when Brian Cowan was Minister for Finance that spending really took off. Honahan makes clear the impact on Irish society of the government's policy. Macroeconomic and budgetary policies contributed significantly to the economic overheating, relying to a clearly unsustainable extent on the construction sector. This helped create a climate of public opinion which was led to believe that the party could last forever. The debate has now moved to the terms of the forthcoming Commission of Inquiry, but a weary public may be sceptical of its ultimate outcome. We need to punish the wrongdoing that's made clear in these reports. That's in the financial services industry. People who made big errors should be, if not imprisoned, bankrupted, or pay very dearly for their, for their bad behavior in the property industry. There are many people who made very bad decisions out of greed and corruption. They should pay. If this activity is not punished, wherever it is next time, People think, ah, oh, I can get away with this because I wasn't punished. They weren't punished last time. They won't be punished this time. That report was from Donna Diamond mm -hmm. and Robert Short. Shane Ross, for a couple of years now, people have been speculating about what happened. You wrote a book on the banks yourself. What do you think these two reports showed us yesterday? How damning a critique are they? I think they're pretty devastating because they confirm all the worst kind of stories which have been run for a very, very long time. And they're devastating because they come from independent narrators. They come from independent observers. It's all very well. You know, me, uh, who people will say have an axe to grind, Richard Bruton, who's, a, who's an opposition spokesman there, other people coming in and saying these things happened. Now today, we've got, or yesterday, we've got a report from Honan, who's the governor of the central bank, and two independent observers uh, from overseas confirming that the... Irish state was really being run at the top of financial area in an absolutely rotten way by a vicious circle. It didn't use those words, but that's the code. That's the words that they were actually saying. And what they were also saying was this, that there's no hiding place for those people who are saying that, who are producing excuses for what happened. They're saying the most powerful argument produced by either, both these reports is this, when they say this was not homegrown. This was homegrown, sorry, this was, this was mm. not compromises. This was a homegrown problem. And they then go about attributing, you know, distributing the blame around, and they do it pretty equally. This is a terrible report for the government. It's devastating for them. It's a terrible report for the bankers, and it's devastating for them, and it's a terrible report for the central banks. It blames the government because they say they let fiscal policy go absolutely wild, that the property boom, the property boom was, was just a what they call it, it was pro-cyclical uh, tax policy. In other words, they fueled the property boom and they didn't stop. It was terrible for the banks. They said the bankers broke all the rules. They lent money recklessly in pursuit of Anglo-Irish banks. And it's appalling, particularly Professor Honan's report, for the central bank. Because they say the central bank, and the word that keeps recurring in this, in this report, is the word deferential. They did what the banks told them to do. It was chaos. OK, staying on banks and regulation before we get on to what it says, I suppose, about how the country was run. Um, like when you quote and when you listen and read Patrick Owen, and even on page nine, he talks about there were no penalties for breach of prudential regulations. They were never imposed on a bank before 2008. I mean, people speculated about that, but it is astonishing still to read that in black and white. It is. I mean, it, it's bizarre. I mean, when things went wrong, nothing was done. People shoved it under the carpet instead of confronting it. If people complained about even meek attempts to confront it, they went further up the line and someone exonerated them further up the line. There was no culture of confronting problems or holding people to account for their action. And that was rife in politics, 
in regulation and in the central bank. And there was a culture there that had been created that you just, it didn't matter. You kept fueling the, the boom that was yielding benefits to everyone, it seemed. And you know, the central bank and the regulator were the people we appointed to stand guard and protect us, to stand guard and protect the 250,000 people who've lost their jobs, you know, the 300,000 people who are in negative equity. Those were people who should have been protected by these institutions and those institutions still just And obviously on the political element of it, there clearly is very severe criticism of the way fiscal policy was run by the government. But frankly, I suppose nobody did very much during this time. You were looking for far more money to be spent. You wanted taxes cuts. So in a sense, is anybody innocent? Is everybody culpable? Well, that's nonsense to say we were looking for more money. The truth was, we year after year, I said to the Minister for Finance that you cannot build these spending commitments on temporary tax resources coming from the property sector. I said benchmarking was unaffordable. I said you, you had to contain your spending to the growth in the economy. I said that you know, you're destroying the competitiveness of our export sectors and we're losing export share six years in a row. But all of those sort of warnings were just ignored. So it's not that everyone was in this. There were people saying that this can't be sustained. But you know, as you saw in the clip, the people who said that loudest were treated with contempt. Uh, and that's the, the truth. They created a culture where you know, anything goes, no one need be responsible for anything. And that, that has to stop. That oh, has to change. The Commission of Inquiry, which obviously mm. these reports were to lead into, it seems astonishing that is not going to look at the government. It's absolutely ridiculous. The, the biggest player in the, in here, apart from the bankers, is the government. Government policy is as responsible as, as any of the other parties involved uh, for what happened to Ireland. And to, say, and to say now, no, we're not going to be able to look at that on the very flimsy excuse which is being used. We all know. The government's saying to themselves, we know we were to blame. What's the point? There's no argument. The whole point of this is to find out what went wrong, who was responsible. And I'm tired of people saying we don't want the blame game. I do want to see the blame game here because it's important to see who was responsible but has to any see what, been, what, what went wrong. Are there any sanctions though? The problem is within the banks, has anyone actually suffered Shane Ross for their incompetence and their utter recklessness, focusing on the banks for a moment? In the banks, a few heads of road. And a few heads of road. Still and a big fat pension. Yeah, just token heads that have road. It is a complete farce what has happened to the banks. The chairman and chief executive of nearly all the banks have now gone, bar two. Uh, they've been replaced by people who are as responsible for the absolute disaster which has happened here as the people who've been removed. They've all been, in AIB's case, they, the chief executive has been replaced by someone who's been there on the staff, senior executive for a long time. In Bank of Ireland, exactly the same thing has happened. In Irish life, so what's exactly the, point in a commission exactly of the same then? thing has been happening. What's the point? If the references of the Commission of Inquiry are not going to be, there's very little point. And let me just say this. Please. Watch who's going to be on the Commission of Inquiry. Okay, we I bet you we're going to see but a just... High Court judge put in there as a, some sort of tame Richard, tool okay. for the government. Richard,